This video shows one solution to Lesson 3, Practice Exercise A, which determines the percentage of cities in the state of Washington that have park and ride facilities. The script begins by importing the ArcPy site package. And then on the next line, I set the overwrite output property to true, which is useful when you're writing scripts like these where you'll be doing some testing and you'll often want to overwrite the output files. Otherwise, ArcGIS is gonna return an error message saying that it can't overwrite the files. So uh, that's a tip to take from this code. In line seven and eight, I'm creating a couple of string variables that store the paths of the feature classes I'm gonna work with, the city boundaries feature class and the park and ride feature class, both coming from the, uh, the Washington file geodatabase. I'm also gonna be updating a field uh, in the city boundaries feature class called has park and ride. I'm gonna be setting that to true or false. And so I make a, a variable to hold the name of that field in line nine. And we'll see that variable used again later. Then in line 10, I'm creating a counter that I'm gonna to use to uh, count the number of cities that have a park and ride. And I'm gonna start that counter off at zero. In line 12, I uh, set up a try block. And we've seen these used earlier in the course to uh, produce uh, custom error messages in place of the ones that ArcGIS produces, which aren't always the most user friendly. So within the try block, we're gonna to try to make two feature layers. And uh, we'll make one that has all of the park and rides and a second one that has all the city boundaries. And for both of these in lines 14 and 17, uh, the make feature layer tool uh, is used and it has two parameters that we have to supply. Number one, the name of the feature class that's going to act as the source of the features for the layer. And number two, uh, the name that we want to use to refer to the feature layer throughout our, the rest of our script. Remember that a feature layer exists only temporarily in memory. While the script is running, it's not something that gets written permanently to disk. So uh, for example, on line 14, we're creating a feature layer object that goes by the name of park and ride layer. So we could have named it anything we want really. So we've got these two feature layers that we can now use to perform selections. And in line 24, we're going to do a location selection to select all the cities that contain features from the park and ride layer. If we were to do this in ArcGIS Pro, which sometimes it's helpful to do to make sure you understand the process, here I've got the uh, park and rides features as the uh, black dots. And the city boundaries features are the uh, polygons filled with uh, orange. So in Pro, I can do the same thing. I can open the uh, select layer by location tool. And I can select, uh, make the input feature layer city boundaries, uh, intersect as the relationship, and selecting features would be park and ride. I can run that. And there you see the selection, uh, the, the city boundaries features that meet that criteria. And you know, I could open up the attribute table and uh, that'll show me that uh, 74 out of 108 city boundaries features were selected. And then I could do some, uh, some operations just on those selected features, right? So uh, with Python, uh, within Python, it's uh, same kind of thing. I can select the features and then do something to just the selected features. So, uh, what we're gonna do is use an update cursor. And that cursor is just going to be working on that narrowed down layer of cities. Uh, it's important to note that on line 24, uh, you started with the cities layer that had all the cities. And after you run line 24, that feature layer is only going to contain a selected subset of the cities. And that's what we're gonna be using in the update cursor. So this update cursor is not gonna update all the records. It's just the, the ones that are currently selected. And it's only gonna be able to update the fields that you specify in the second parameter. So uh, where I've put park and ride field here inside parentheses, uh, that's a tuple, a Python tuple that has just one item in it in this case, representing the field that I want to make updates to. If you'll recall, I created that variable uh, up on line nine uh, to store the, the name of the, the field that I'm interested in. 
So what I have is a cursor that I can use to iterate row by row. And I do that using a for loop, which starts on line 28. And then on line 30, I take uh, that park and ride field and I set it to true. Now, why do I say uh, zero here in square brackets? Well, zero is the index position of the field that I passed in in that tuple up here. The first, and in this case, the only field in the tuple is at position zero. If I was updating three or four fields, I would use that same row variable, but then in square brackets, I would use one, two, three, etc. So after I've made the changes to the fields uh, that I want to make, I need to call the update row method in order for the changes to stick. And that's a mistake that a lot of beginners uh, make. They, they forget to call on that method. Line 32, I'm incrementing the counter variable that I created. Um, so I, I just want to add one to that counter. And so the plus equals one syntax you see there is a shortcut for saying, take whatever number is in this variable, add one to it, and stick the result back into the variable. Okay. So after my loop through the cities, on line 35, I uh, create a, a finally block, uh, which is going to run whether or not the above code failed. So it cleans up the feature layers that we created so that they're not stuck in the, in the computer's memory. I could put the, those two statements uh, in an accept block, perhaps, but I put them in a finally block because I want them to be, I want those lines to be executed whether the, the try code succeeds or fails, right? I, I want to clean up those uh, references to the uh, feature classes so I don't leave locks on them. I also use a Python del statement to uh, clear the row and cursor objects out of memory for the same reason I use the delete tool above, make sure, making sure I don't have any locks left on the uh, feature classes. So now that I've done all those things, it's time to do some math. Uh, to figure out the percentage of cities that have a park and ride. So line 41, I'm running the get count tool in ArcGIS. And you can run this tool directly on a feature class. Uh, so here, I'm not passing it a feature layer, I'm passing in the, the path to a, uh, an actual feature class. Notice in 41 that I referenced the city boundaries variable. That's a variable that I created up uh, at the top of the script uh, to store the path to that feature class. When you use the get count tool, it's a bit unintuitive because what it returns isn't actually a number, it's a result object. What you can do with that object isn't very well documented. So you can just follow on this example and, and the ones, ones to follow and use zero in square brackets to get at the count, which is going to be in string form and then use the int function to convert that string into an integer. So what we have at the end in line 42 is a variable called numCities. That's the total number of cities in the entire data set. And we've been keeping a counter of the cities that have a park and ride. So uh, really the last step is to, uh, in order to find the percentage, we just divide uh, the counter variable by the total variable. And that's what's happening on line 45. So then finally, we just print out the result uh, with a print statement. 